This is a service film for flight LSPM products covering pumps 3085, 3102, 3127, 3153 and flight mixer 4650. This film should be seen as a complement to the installation, care and maintenance and service and repair manuals. For more detailed information regarding repair of these products, please refer to the manuals. This information should be seen as a complement to the installation, operation and maintenance IOM, and service and repair documentation. Read these documents carefully before working on an LSPM product. There is no magnetism outside an LSPM pump or mixer and there are no special requirements for transporting, installing and carrying out preventive maintenance on these products. However, special precautions need to be taken when working inside the motor. Make sure your workbench is clean. Use rubber cloth, wood or stainless steel as the surface material on the workbench. Before starting to work, put your cell phone, watch and credit cards in a safe place, away from your work area. Never work with LSPM products if you have a pacemaker. Loosen the screws that hold the stator housing in place. Use a crane with proper lifting capacity. Attach the hook to the lifting handle of the pump. Lift the stator housing. If the pump is equipped with leakage sensors, just lift it high enough so that you can reach the connectors and disconnect the sensors. At this point, the stator will get stuck due to the magnetic field of the rotor. Press the pump housing or oil housing down and continue lifting the stator housing until it is free from the rotor. Continue to disassemble the pump in the same manner as a standard pump. Make sure no metal particles are stuck on the rotor. Lower the stator housing onto the rotor. At this point, the stator will get stuck to the rotor due to magnetism. If the pump is equipped with leakage sensors, insert a block of wood or something similar to ensure your safety when connecting the leakage sensors. Connect the sensors. Press the stator housing down until it is free from rotor magnetism. Continue lowering the stator housing and turn it so it is correctly aligned. Tighten the screws that hold the stator housing in place. Continue to assemble the pump in the same manner as a standard pump. To ensure work safety, we recommend that you use an upside down stand, part number 6082302. Secure the stand to the workbench with two clamps. Loosen the screws holding the adapter. Remove the adapter. Inside the inspection chamber, you will find a warning sign. Remove the spring ring. Attach the hook and lift the shaft unit up until you can reach the connector of the leakage sensor. Disconnect the sensor and continue lifting until the shaft slash rotor unit is free. Continue to disassemble the pump in the same manner as a standard pump. Make sure no metal particles are stuck on the rotor. Lower the shaft rotor unit into the stator housing. The rotor will get stuck due to magnetism. Connect the leakage sensor. Continue lowering the shaft rotor unit until it is down in the correct position. Align the bearing housing according to index. 
shake and press the rotor down. Continue to assemble the pump in the same manner as a standard pump. To ensure work safety when working on the LSPM Mixer 4650, it is mandatory to use the special stator tool, part number 7283400. This tool consists of middle threaded rod, threaded rods, yoke, flange, extended shaft. Turn the mixer upside down and stand it up on the propeller. Make sure to isolate the stator leads to prevent electric shock. Remove the plastic cover. Remove the KM nut. If the bearing is jammed, lift the stator with a two-arm puller. Remove the bearing. Remove the washers and spring washers. Use a hook wrench to screw the rod onto the thread of the shaft. Grease the shaft with bearing grease. Then, fit the flange on the stator using two M10 screws. Mount the threaded rods and yoke on the flange. Secure the lifting equipment to the shackles. The required distance between the flange and the upper side of the yoke is 380 mm. Tighten the middle threaded rod to pull off the stator housing from the shaft rotor unit until the middle rod is in its lowest position. The required distance between the stator and the bearing housing is approximately 280 mm. Remove the extended shaft from the shaft rotor unit. Lift the stator housing from the shaft rotor unit. Loosen the threaded rod until the extended shaft is above the edge of the stator housing so that you can set the stator housing down without the risk of it tipping over. Use bubble wrap or a plastic sheet to protect the rotor from metallic debris. Continue to disassemble the mixer in the same manner as a standard 4650 mixer. Mount the flange on the stator housing. Mount two M16 lifting eye bolts to the flange. Place the stator housing in a horizontal position. Connect the loose middle threaded rod to the extended shaft. Lead the threaded rod and the extended shaft through the inner roller bearing in the stator housing. Be careful not to damage the rollers of the bearing. Stand the stator up and mount the threaded rods and yoke. Fasten the middle threaded rod to the yoke until the yoke is level on the three rods. The required distance between the flange and the upper side of the yoke is 380 millimeters. Make sure no metal particles are stuck on the rotor. Tighten the middle threaded rod until it reaches its lowest position. 
use the lifting equipment to lower the extended shaft onto the rotor and mount the extended shaft on the rotor. Align the index on the stator housing with the index on the bearing holder. Grease the bearing housing to avoid the stator housing becoming stuck during assembly. Loosen the middle rod until the stator is in place. Remove the threaded rods, the flange and the extended shaft from the shaft rotor unit. Continue to assemble the mixer in the same manner as a standard 4650 mixer. Shaft rotor units for LSPM products are delivered in special boxes. These boxes are approved for air freight. Outside the box, the magnetism is close to zero. Damaged shaft stator units should be treated as normal metal scrap and recycled accordingly. Removal of debris and metal particles from the rotor is done with duct tape. If you need to store the rotor, cover it with plastic first. Store the shaft rotor unit in its original box or on a wooden pallet or shelf. Never store the shaft rotor unit on a metal shelf. The magnets in the shaft rotor unit can be damaged by mechanical stress or if they are exposed to temperatures higher than 300 degrees Celsius. Never put the rotor in a vise when removing bearings. If using a vise, fit the lower end of the shaft in the vise. Do not shorten power wires. Do not touch power wires or terminals if the propeller or impeller is rotating. The rotors and shafts from LSPM products can be scrapped together with regular metal scrap and recycled accordingly. Please check local regulations.